Sebastian, and I'm presenting Not All the Same, Understanding and Informing Similarity Estimation in Tile-Based Video Games. This is work that I did together with Vanessa Foltz and Sam Snodgrass at Model AI, Larissa Tokarczuk at Queen Mary University of London, and Christian Gokelsberger at Alto University. So let me introduce first uh, tile-based video games. Um, here are two examples. Candy Crush Saga is a popular match 3 game, and Legend of Zelda is a classic dungeon crawler. Both of these games are very different in gameplay, but what they have in common is that their levels are made out of tiles, and these are arranged in a fixed grid. We motivate our work um, by its relevance for game developers and researchers. So similarity estimation is essential for many game AI applications. And human similarity evaluation is often substituted by computational metrics. For example, Candy Crush is played by many people every day. There's a high demand for new content. To generate and serve new levels automatically while maintaining player uh, engagement, new levels need to be perceived as dissimilar from previous ones. So computational metrics need to be aligned with human perception. The problem is that it's unclear how well the metrics can approximate human perception of similarity. And that's because there exists no empirical data to support the selection of similarity metrics. We formulate two research questions. First, which existing metrics approximate the human similarity perception of tablet video game levels best? And second, what are the dimensions that govern this human similarity perception? And we address these questions with two human participant studies. A quantitative study comparing computation similarity metrics to human similarity judgments and a qualitative interpretation study to label the dimensions of perceptual embeddings. We select seven similarity metrics with a total of 12 configurations. These are separated into three groups. Computer vision metrics like CLIP and DreamSim based on artificial neural networks, purpose metrics like normalized compression distance and hamming distance, which are domain agnostic, and then metrics from the procedural content generation literature, like tile frequencies, tile patterns, symmetry. These are based on expert knowledge. We specifically select metrics because they're used in video games related research and in the games industry. We have specific questions also about these groups of uh, metrics. Computer vision metrics are trained primarily on natural images. So can they actually generalize to synthetic images of video game levels? And metrics from the PCG literature are custom solutions designed by hand with expert knowledge and intuition. But do these expert metrics actually capture similarity relevant criteria of human judgment? This is our experimental design. We have two video game titles and two representations. These are the titles that I presented earlier, Candy Crush Saga and Legend of Zelda. The image representation is just screenshots of the levels. We have an abstract color pattern uh, representation, which is a translation of the screenshot. We choose pattern representation because we want to focus on the abstract patterns that are used in the level design process and are also used by many PCG algorithms. Um, we, in the end, we want to provide recommendations for the metrics in these two scenarios. In the, the, for the in-game use, what the player would see, and at design time. So this gives us a, a, a total of four experimental conditions. So let's start with our first study, Human vs. Computational Similarity Evaluation. These are study questions. Um, we use a conventional approach to alternative forced choice for our questions, and this has shown to be the most robust judgment type. We call these triplets. Uh, here's an example on the right-hand side. Um, so we, are, we asked the participants to consider the patterns contained in the images. And we want to know which of the two images below is most similar to the one above. We have two large data sets of, of levels. Uh, and from both, we select uh, 17 levels as stimuli each. And these images are then translated into abstract color patterns. With a 17 stimuli per experimental condition, we get a total of 2,040 triplets per condition and 8,160 overall. That's a lot of questions. We need to scale that down. So to make it a little bit easier for participants to answer their questions, from the 2,040 triplets per condition, we randomly select 25 triplets for every participant. 
So every participant judges a total of 100 triplets. We recruited participants on Prolific. 456 completed the full survey, so that gives us about 4,500 uh, judgments. Participants were compensated with an equivalent of £10 per hour. From the collected triplet judgment data, we derive a perceptual embedding. So every stimulus is placed in a Euclid Euclidean vector space of four dimensions. For this, we use an embedding algorithm, TSTE, which is an al alternative to multidimensional scaling. And this is done for every condition separately. We perform two data analyses. In the first analysis, we leverage the perceptual embeddings of stimuli and compare the pairwise similarity matrices from the embeddings and the computational metrics. We then perform a supplementary analysis number two, which is an inter-rater agreement on the triplet questions between every participant and metric. Analysis one quantifies a metrics prediction error, and analysis two basically indicates a metrics overall agreement with all participants. We plot the results for the four experimental conditions. Here's analysis one. On the y-axis, we have all configurations of the computational metrics. The x-axis shows mean squared error. I want to highlight computer vision metrics, which perform very well, and the second best alternative um, tile frequencies from the procedural content generation literature. These are results of analysis two with the same highlight. So the takeaway from this first study, computer vision metrics perform best despite being trained on natural images. That is to say, they generalize to images of video game levels and to color patterns. But they are also very resource intensive because they're based on artificial neural networks. So at expert metrics from the PCG literature do not perform as well, but can be an alternative to computer vision metrics. The next best, based on our results, is tile frequencies. These metrics may not comprehensively capture all similarity relevant criteria. So on our question naturally is, what is missing? And this leads us to study two, the interpretation of similarity dimensions. So we gave our uh, participants these type of ec examples um, of, of dimensions of the embedding. And we wanted to know which label best describes the visual properties used to place the pattern along the, the axis. In our study setup, we had four focus groups, one group per condition, and a workshop format was a one hour in person uh, focus group. We com compensated every participant with a 15 pound gift voucher. We recruited eight participants and all of, the, all of them had relevant experience in HCI, psychology, game AI research, game design, game development. This is the procedure. In every group, uh, participants would first individually label the dimension, then have an in-group discussion, and finally, within the group, reach a consensus label. And this is done per, per focus group and for every embedding dimension individually. Here are some of the results, the similarity relevant criteria that the participants highlighted. First, pattern shape, um, where the squareness is of importance. So here we have an example of squareness, where on the left hand side we have more vertical, horizontal shapes, and as we go to the right hand side, shapes become more diagonal or irregular. Second is uh, tile composition, where participants labeled um, this axis as complexity, from low complexity on the left-hand side, very few types of tiles, to high complexity of, of the pattern on the right-hand side. Participants all, also highlighted the choice of sprites to be a relevant criterion. For example, here tile colors from bright to dark. On the left-hand side, quite bright uh, colors of the sprites, and they become darker as we go to the right. Similarly, they highlighted colorfulness and brightness as uh, similarity relevant criteria. So to wrap up, these are our contributions. We performed two human participant studies. The first helps us to understand the advantages and limitations of existing metrics. And the second informs the development of better domain specific metrics. Finally, we also uh, make publicly available our study data and the implementation of the metric test suit. So this helps researchers and developers to build on our work 
and it's available on this link. So here's a QR code that should lead you to this website um, and to the code and data. Um, here's a way to contact me. Please reach out to me if you have any questions. Thank you.